In this video, I will explain what a hierarchical deterministic wallet is, what Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 32 and Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44 is. A link to this presentation can be found in the description below. In Blockchain Tutorial 28, I have explained Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39. Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39 describes how the mnemonic words are created. These mnemonic words, together with a password, optionally, is used to generate a 512-bit seed. In this video, the 512-bit seed is also called the BIP39 seed. This seed is used as input to generate private and public keys for deterministic wallets. There are two types of deterministic wallets, sequential deterministic wallets and hierarchical deterministic wallets. Sequential deterministic wallets generates private keys, for example by taking SHA-256 over the seed plus N, where N is an index number that starts from zero and increments as additional keys are needed. This is the simplified explanation. Nowadays, most wallets are hierarchical deterministic wallets. This wallet type is described at this location. Most hierarchical deterministic wallet vendors have implemented Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 32, 39, and 44. These three Bitcoin Improvement Proposals are becoming an industry standard. If your hierarchical deterministic wallet is BIP32, 39, and 44 compliant, then you can transfer your private keys to another wallet from another vendor which also implemented these standards. However, implementation of these standards can differ. For example, a vendor implementing Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39 uses his own word list, making his wallet not compatible with other vendors. Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39 describes the implementation of mnemonic words to generate a 512-bit seed. This seed can be used to create a hierarchical deterministic wallet. More information about Bitcoin Improvement 39 can be found at this location. Or watch my YouTube video Blockchain Tutorial 28, Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 39, Mnemonic Words. This YouTube video. Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 32 describes how you can build a general hierarchical deterministic wallet. These wallets can be shared partially or entirely with different systems, each with or without the ability to spend coins. More information about Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 32 can be found at the following two locations. If you want to see how Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 32 is implemented in the Bitcoin JS library, see this location. I have created this web application specifically for this YouTube video. This application is created for educational purpose explaining how hierarchical deterministic wallets works. Do not use this tool in production, otherwise you will lose all your cryptocurrencies. This application only creates valid keys and addresses for Ethereum wallets implementing BIP39, BIP32 and BIP44. Let's see how we can generate a BIP39 seed. We have two methods. This is method 1 and this is method 2. In method 1 we select the entropy length. We can choose between these lengths. Let's select the first one. We can select the word list and optionally we can enter a password. Press this button. It automatically generates these mnemonic words and this is the BIP39 seed which we need. This seed is automatically inserted in this field. Instead of method 1, we can choose method 2 to generate a BIP39 seed. You can enter your mnemonic words or random number in this field. For example, these are my mnemonic words. You can select the word list and optionally enter a password. Press this button. As you can see over here, this is the BIP39 seed. This seed is also automatically inserted in this field. BIP32 explains how master keys and master chain code are created from a BIP39 seed. The chain code is used as entropy in the child key derivation function. In the next slide, I will explain what this function is. You start with the BIP39 seed. The HMAC SHA512 hash function uses this seed and generates this hash. 
The left part of the hash is the master private key, indicated with the lowercase letter m, and the right part of the hash is the master chain code, indicated with the letter c. The master private key can be used to generate the master public key, indicated with the capital letter M. In the previous slide, I've talked about the master private key and the master public key and master chain code. In this slide, it is now called parent private key and parent public key and parent chain code. This HMAC SHA-512 hash function is called the child key derivation function. This function requires three inputs, an index number, a chain code, and one of these two keys, the private key or the public key. This index number can be divided into two separate ranges. This range from 0 to 2 to the power of 31 minus 1, or 2 to the power of 31 till 2 to the power of 32 minus 1. If the index number is in this range, it is called normal keys. And if the index number lies in this range, it is called hardened keys. If you want to create hardened keys, we use the parent private key, indicated by this letter. If you want to create normal keys, we use the parent public key indicated with the letter N over here. If you want to create hardened keys, for example, 2 to the power of 31 plus 0, that's the index number. We insert the chain code, we insert the parent private key into the hash function. The hash function creates a hash value. The left part is called hash left, and the right part is called hash right. The hash right part is also called the child chain code. Because we are creating hardened keys, we are looking at this part, indicated with the letter H. This hash left is the same as this hash left. We take the parent private key, this part, and together they create the child private key. And if we have the child private key, we can create the child public key. If we now increase the index number with 1, for instance, 2 to the power of 31 plus 1. We insert it into the hash function. We use the same parent private key. We use the same parent chain code. It will create a new hash value with a new child chain code. Hash left is inserted over here. We take the parent private key, insert it over here. This will form the child private key. And this child private key can create the child public key. If we keep increasing this index number, we create new child private key and child public keys. What we have now done is a child key derivation. We started with the BIP32 seed and created the parent private key, parent public key and the parent chain code. This is called the master node. If we keep the parent private key the same and the parent chain code, but we increase the index number, we generate child private keys and child public keys, indicated by these lines. In fact, what we have created is a wallet with different addresses. If I want to create children from this index number, I have to do the following. I want to create children based on index value 1. I'm calculating hardened keys. I'm adding 1 plus 2 to the power of 31. That's my new index number. I'm inserting the parent chain code and the parent private key. The child key derivation function calculates a new hash value and it will calculate a new child chain code. This child chain code will replace the parent chain code. The parent private key will remain the same. And we can now create new child private keys and child public keys by starting again with index number 0, so 0 plus 2 to the power of 31, using the same parent private key, but with the new chain code. Using different index numbers will create different unlinkable child keys from the same parent keys. Repeating the procedure for the child keys using the child chain code 
will create unlinkable grandchild keys. By changing the chain code, a new node, aka wallet, is created. In the previous slide, I've explained how to create hardened keys. And hardened keys are the child private key and the child public key. If you want to create normal keys, you use index numbers within this range. And you use the parent public key. Normal keys consist only of child public keys. It doesn't create child private keys. For example, if I want to create a normal key, I use index number zero. I use the same parent chain code and I'm now using the parent public key. The hash function creates a new hash value. This hash left value is the same as this hash left. This parent public key is the same as this parent public key. These two values together is the child public key. If we keep increasing the index number, we keep creating new child public keys. If we create normal keys, we create a wallet with only public keys. And we also can create public keys based on this index number. If we want to create child public keys based on index number one, we use the same parent chain code and we are using the parent public key. The hash function will create a new hash value and it will create a child chain code. This child chain code will replace this parent chain code. And now we can start with index number zero. Using the parent public key, the hash function will create a new hash value and this hash value will be used to create a new child public key. This function is also known as the child key derivation function. It derives child keys from parent keys. These keys are also called derived child keys. The extended private key is indicated by these letters and consists of the parent private key plus the parent chain code. The extended public key is indicated by these letters and consists of the parent public key plus the parent chain code. Extended private keys can create a complete branch with child private keys and child public keys, as indicated here. And extended public keys create only a branch of child public keys. It cannot create hardened keys. Extended public keys can only generate public keys. This is perfect if you want a wallet which can only watch your account balances or receive coins, but you cannot sign any transactions because there are no private keys available. A wallet created with an extended private key can generate public keys and private keys. Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44 defines a specific logical hierarchy for deterministic wallets based on an algorithm described in Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 32. More information about Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44 can be found at this location. Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44 uses the following derivation path. The letter M denotes the master node and all hierarchical levels are separated with slashes. M is level 0, purpose is level 1, coin type is level 2, etc. The purpose scheme is described in Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 43. Because we are using Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44 scheme, we should use 44 prime. The apostrophe, for example, in purpose prime, indicates hardened derivation. This apostrophe. The apostrophe is also used here and here. The default registered coin types for usage in level 2 of Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44 can be found at this location. Here's a list of registered coin types for Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44. And these are the coins. Bitcoin has value 0 and Ethereum uses value 60. The account level can be seen as bank account types. 
for example, payment account, savings account, etc. Change level is also known as external or internal level, where external, zero, is used as addresses that are meant to be visible outside of the wallet, for example, for receiving payments. And internal, value one, is used for addresses which are not meant to be visible outside of the wallet, for example, for signing transactions. Address index is a sequence of addresses starting at zero. The keys in hierarchical deterministic wallets are identified using a path naming convention. For example, m slash 44 prime slash 60 prime slash 0 prime slash 1 slash 4. This is the fifth address at change level 1. This is an example of a derivation path. These values are using apostrophes, which means this is hardened derivation. These values have no apostrophes, which means normal derivation. What does this derivation path mean? The purpose is 44, which means this derivation path complies to Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44. The coin type is 0, which means Bitcoin. That's this 0. The count is 0. The change is 0. And the address index is 0. If you look over here, here's the start of the wallet. This wallet is a Bitcoin wallet which complies to Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44. This is account 0, this is account 1, etc. Below account level 0, we start with change level 0. And below change level 0, we can create addresses. Address 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Account 0 can represent our payment accounts and account 1 can represent our savings accounts. This is change level 0 and this is change level 1. Why would we want to use change level 0 and change level 1? Suppose you have 10 bitcoins and you want to transfer 4 bitcoins to another address and 6 bitcoins you want to receive as change. So these addresses, for example, can be used as our change addresses. This is another example. The purpose is 44, but now we are using coin type 60, which means Ethereum. This wallet is an Ethereum wallet, which complies to Bitcoin Improvement Proposal 44. As with the Bitcoin wallet, we can create multiple accounts. Here's account 0, here's account 1, and we can create more accounts. Just as Bitcoin, we can use this account as our payment account and this account as our savings account. But in an Ethereum wallet, we usually only use one change level, as you can see over here. Below every account level, there will be only one change level, change level zero. This particular situation will probably not occur. Below change level zero, you can find all the addresses. Suppose a webshop wants to receive payments in only in Ethereum. For each payment received, a different Ethereum address must be used. The webshop should use a wallet containing only public keys. The webshop wallet uses an extended public key with derivation path m slash 44 prime slash 60 prime slash 0 prime slash 0. This wallet creates the following addresses. Address 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. The accounting department, separated from the web shop, uses another wallet containing the same public keys and accompanied private keys. The accounting department can transfer payments made on these public addresses and transfer it to a separate accounting address. This is possible because they have access to the private keys. The accounting department wallet uses an extended private key with the same derivation path m slash 44 prime slash 60 prime slash 0 prime slash 0. Here is a demonstration. Suppose I am the wallet administrator. I need to create two wallets, a webshop wallet and an account department wallet. To create the webshop wallet, I need to create the extended public key at change level 0 with this derivation path. To create the account department wallet, I need to create the extended private key 
at change level 0 with this derivation path. As you can see, the derivation paths are the same. This wallet will only contain public keys. This wallet will contain the same public keys, but also the private keys. First, create the BIP39 seed. I'm choosing the 128-bit entropy length. I'm selecting the English word list and I'm not using a password. And I'm pressing this button. So this is my mnemonic word. I will save it. This is the BIP39 seed. This seed is automatically inserted over here. The purpose is 44, which is correct. The coin type is 60, that is Ethereum. Here are all the other coin types. This derivation path reflects the value what you select here and insert here. If you select Ether Classic with a value of 61, you can see the derivation path changes. If you change the account value to 100, account value changes over here. If you change the change level to 1, you can see this value changes to 1. You can enter a start address index value and an end address index value, which means it will generate addresses from 0 till 10. Please note, I only display this coin type for educational purpose, but this web application only works for Ether. I'm now pressing this button. And here are all the information I need. I'm only interested in the extended public key and extended private key with this derivation path. That's this derivation path. This derivation path matches this derivation path. I'm copying these two lines. This is the extended public key for the webshop wallet. And this is the extended private key for the account department wallet. For later comparison, let's copy these addresses. I'm only copying a few of them. So I've copied these addresses over here. This is address 0, address 1, address 2, and address 3. All right. Let's refresh this page. So this page is completely reset. Suppose I now want to create my webshop wallet. The only thing I need is the extended public key. That's this key. Copy it. Let's paste this extended public key in this field. I'm only interested in address 0 till 3. I'm selecting this checkbox because these keys come from an Ethereum wallet. I'm now pressing this button. As you can see, the extended public key generates these public keys. Let's compare these generated addresses and see if they are the same. If we look at address 0, that's this one. If you look at the public key, 3A5 is the same as this one, 3A5. E46A, E46A, that's correct. So this is address 1, the address is 85F, 85F, and the public key is 9FB, 9FB, that's also correct. This proves that the extended public key generates the correct public addresses. Let's refresh this page. Let's create account department wallet. I only need the extended private key. Let's copy this key. Paste this key. Do the same as before and press this button. Let's check if the private and public keys are the same. Address 0, this is address 0. The address is E46, E46. Private key is 238, private key is 238. And the public key is 3A5, public key is 3A5, that's correct. Address 1, address 1, address is 85F, 85F, private key is A22, A22, and the public key is 9FB, 9FB. This proves that the extended private key creates the same private keys and public keys. The change level is not hardened, as you can see over here.
If a hacker gets his hands on any child private key, for example, this key and the account extended public key, the hacker can recompute the account extended private key and thus have access to every private key and public key descending from the account level, from this level. If an hacker gets its hands on the extended public key and one of these private keys, then a hacker can recompute this extended private key, which means the hacker has access to all these addresses. For more information about this risk, go to this link. Extended public keys only generates public keys, but you must be aware of the above mentioned risk. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe. If you have questions, leave your comments below. I'll do my best to answer them.